Ka. And then bite and swallow. Ka. 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 Okay, this hey, moving... The the moving the head thing has to stop. Oh, all right. Well, we're on. So. All right. <laughs> it's all about the neck today. No, you got it. <laughs> so welcome to the Spot for Health. My name is Shirley Gutkowski, your host of the show that tells the community of Sun Prairie where to go for their health care needs. And today we are going to be talking about pillows and sleep management with the chiropractor that's opened a new practice here on the corner of Burden, Maine, Dr. Jennifer Colander. Did I say it right? Perfect. Awesome. So Dr. Colander graduated with honors from Northwestern College of Chiropractic. She's board certified by the Wisconsin Board of Chiropractic Examiners and by the National Board of Chiropractic Examiners. In Oh, she's also a physiotherapist. I do physiotherapies. You do physiotherapies. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's a little bit different. Mm -hmm. Strength training and conditioning. She's a member of the Sun Prairie Ch Chamber of Commerce. She's been in practice for close to 15 years, just not here in Sun Prairie. We'll learn about that in a second. And uh, the practice is on the corner of Bird and Main, and we'll be putting up the address and stuff for that later. But we, well, all right, so what is physiotherapy? Let's start there. Physiotherapies are therapies such as ultrasound and electrical muscle stim. They are adjuncts to my chiropractic adjustments used to uh, either sedate muscles to help to relax muscles and to settle muscles down. Electrical muscle stim is used more in an acute phase and ultrasounds are used more so in a chronic tight muscle um, issue. So I use those uh, to help aid and assist in the improvement of a patient. All right, so thank you for that. You're welcome. Well, you enlightened us a little bit. So <clears throat> how'd you get here and where are you from? <laughs> well, originally <laughs> I'm from Minnesota uh -oh. and an avid Viking fan. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> um, I, I went to school in the Twin Cities. Um, I had a practice in Onalaska, Wisconsin. Um, I sold that. Uh, took a couple of years off. I have young sons and decided to stay home with my sons for a couple of years. My youngest will start kindergarten in fall. And uh, my husband's job brought us here to Madison. So my, with my youngest starting full-time school in fall, I felt a need to get back to helping people. I love to help people. <laughs> yeah, dishes and housework and, and pointing little kids around does get a little old. It's I don't a, know. Sorry. It, it's a <laughs> tough job. Yeah. It's, it's actually the toughest job I've had, and I loved it, but it, it it was good. Yeah. And it's we're moving to a new chapter. Awesome. Well, that's good, because I had five sons. They're all older than me now, so... <laughs> <laughs> How's that work? It's a magic trick that I only know. Uh, so it was, it was really difficult, but I'm, you know, they're all awesome. They've always been awesome, but there were times when they were less awesome because <laughs> they did uh, have become teenagers. But all right, aside from that, so you're, you're a chiropractor, and you've been a chiropractor for, for quite some time. And there are a lot of chiropractors here in Sun Prairie. And when we approached you to be on the show, you were like, well, you know, what am I going to talk about? And uh, when you brought up this idea of pillows, I was like, well, duh, nobody's talking about pillows. I don't know anybody. I don't know. I guess I get around, but it's not a topic that comes up very much. But straight, straight alignment or alignment of the spine comes up quite a bit. And I've been really spending a lot of time learning about sleep and how people sleep and why they sleep. And what we do at our practice at Primal Air to help develop that snoring complex, the nose, the mouth, and the back of the throat, which are supported by the cervical spine. So that's, you know, there's a really important little cluster of activity right here. And chiropractors work on the neck. Dentists never look past the last tooth. <laughs> <laughs> and ENTs are in between. So when we work all together, I think that would be the ideal. But the pillow thing really captured my attention because I have, I think my husband and each, and I each have like six pillows <laughs> on our side of the bed. And most of them are just pushed up against the back and I sleep with a pillow. 
So what are the goals of a pillow and how do we know what a good pillow is? The primary goal is always proper cervical and upper back alignment. And we'll demonstrate that in just a bit. I check patients, almost every patient that comes to my office that is uh, complaining of neck, upper back discomfort or headaches, um, I will check their pillows. And the majority of the time they are on incorrect, on an incorrect fitting pillow. Um, and so it is of utmost importance for the alignment of the spine and to maintain my work. So um, I do this uh, frequently and it's surprising some of the pillows that come into my office. Oh, I bet. <laughs> I know that when I talked to you originally, I was like, oh, she's gonna love this pillow. Cause it's kind of, it's, it's, I've turned into a pillow snob over the last couple of months. It's the loppiest, lopiest, most bunched uppy pillow that I have. And it's the one that I can manipulate and change around to make me more comfortable. There actually is a time and a place for a pillow like that. Yeah. Uh, but we'll find with you, it is not appropriate. <laughs> it's not appropriate. Well, we already, we already rehearsed it. That's why she's winking at me. So, all right. So, <clears throat> there are internal parts of the pillow that also contribute to airway issues that are structural from the nose back. So do you have an opinion on what kind of material should be inside of a pillow? Uh, actually, I'm not a fan of feathers because of allergy issues. I've also found patients, especially females, tend not to like the um, memory foam pillows because they tend to be hot oh. and with some things, uh, other health issues that can be happening. Yeah. <laughs> um, they're not always appreciative of the memory foam pillows. The pillow, the pillows that I prefer tend to have a contour in them. The bulk of a pillow should always fit, uh, hit under the neck. And that is one issue that I see frequently when a patient brings in a pillow Many times the bulk of the pillow has moved to the center of the pillow, and we'll, we'll talk about that mm -hmm. more. Uh, but it should make sense if the bulk of the pillow tends to hit at the ear and the edge of the pillow is flat, the flat area is hitting at the neck and our ear and shoulders stick out further than the neck. Right. So the thickest part of the pillow should actually be hitting at the neck. So that's, that's irrespective of laying on your side or your back or your, what if you're laying on your stomach? Um, and we would, <laughs> we'll d discuss that. Uh -oh. I do not care for belly sleeping at all. Um, it, twofold, there's a couple of reasons. For one, people tend to turn their head to one direction frequently. Some people will alternate, but it places substantial stress on the neck uh, and actually creates the very misalignments that I am trying to treat. Mm -hmm. uh, so I do not, I, I, I ask patients not to sleep on their bellies. The other issue that tends to happen with belly sleeping is patients will bring an arm up mm -hmm. and anytime you open up the <laughs> armpit, sorry about that, anytime you open up the armpit, um, what will happen is you risk extra stress to the shoulder and I often see patients then with rotator cuff problems down the road oh. from that. So you could sleep your way to a rotator cuff problem? I, I or miss sleep? I, I believe, I see that frequently in my office, yes. Uh, people will come in with rotator cuff issues and when asked their sleeping position, notoriously they are sleeping with their arm under their pillow. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So what I've learned from the sleep stuff that I've been looking at is that um, people will sleep, may sleep with their mouth open in an effort to get more air because if you're sleeping crooked or you're sleeping on your stomach and you've got your head turned like that, you restrict the airway. And so you're forced to breathe through your mouth in order to get air at all. 
And um, when I was at your office a couple weeks ago and I was showing you what I sleep, I sleep now with tape on my mouth to make sure that my lips stay together so that I'll breathe through my nose. It's really critical to breathe through your nose. So <clears throat> is that something that you're noticing with people with these other kinds of pillows? What I find is I will have wives in particular mm. telling me that their husbands are snor snoring less once they are on an appropriate pillow. And I believe, just like you're saying, mm -hmm. the position of the cervical spine in the head influences then the breathing, the, the passageways, um, and can improve all sleep that way as well. It is usually those patients that are back sleepers that I hear uh, their wives telling of the improvements. <laughs> well, you know, the thing is that not, so if the husband is the snorer, the wife isn't getting any sleep, but the husband isn't getting any good quality sleep either. Correct. So that's a really big problem. Philip and I were just doing a lot of um, study on drowsy driving. Oh my God, the, the money, <laughs> $12 billion is spent on drunk, uh, drowsy driving costs. So sleeping better is a really big deal. Um, what strikes me is, one of the things that strikes me is that all of the push seems to be to turn off your television, have something warm to drink before you go to bed, keep your room cool. There's a thing on Facebook now, if you stick your leg out from under your blanket, that's supposed to help you sleep. But nobody's really talking about the pillow. It is, and as I say, 90% of those patients coming in that complain of neck, upper back issues, and I check their pillow are on incorrect pillows. Another thing to always think about too is a pillow, the pillow that you choose is dependent upon the size of the individual. No. <laughs> Why yes. <laughs> so many times I see husband and wives sleeping on the very same pillow, mm -hmm. and most often they're not the same dimensions, and we'll talk about that here shortly as well. Okay, great. Yeah, we're going to have a little demo today. Mm -hmm. I brought my own pillow, so you guys are going to be able to see my pillow. I changed the pillowcase this morning, <laughs> just so, but now I see it's almost <laughs> the same color as the top of your your um, table table there, mm -hmm. so we'll, well, we'll, we'll figure out a way to get that seen. So why don't we do that right now? Okay, sounds great. All right, so here we are. Here's my pillow. What do you think of my nice, bunchy, busted up, nothing formed pillow? I think that you will be very happy after this <laughs> assessment. So um, the, couple of th the, the way that I start an assessment in my office with a patient, I ask a couple of questions. The first question is, how do you sleep? In what position? And some patients will st uh, sleep strictly, say, on their side or on their back. Others might flip-flop between a couple of positions, and then there are people who are all over the place. And the main positions are going to be side sleeping, back sleeping, belly sleeping, which we don't even cover here because I do not want my patients sleeping on their tummies. Right. And then the fourth would be half belly, half side sleeping. And that also is very hard on the neck and the low back uh, because of twisting the spine. And so I try to have patients focus primarily on back or side sleeping. If people tend to sleep on both, it's, it's nice if they are different sizes, we'll talk about that because you are that person, mm -hmm. um, that they choose either to try to train themselves to stay on their sides or on their back. Okay, so I sleep on my side and I sleep on this side. Perfect, this'll be great. So let's have you lie onto your right side and show me how you use your pillow. Okay, so I have like my other pillows right there, but I don't use them. Okay. So I lay down like this, like that. Okay, so the second question, which I didn't get to yet, oh, will sorry. also be, what is the, how firm is the mattress that the person is sleeping on? Because that plays a role also in how a pillow is used. So it's about a medium. Medium, it's not real firm and it's, it's, it's a medium bed. Okay, all right. So right now, as you're lying there, there are a couple of things that uh, are being demonstrated. For one, you have that arm up under the pillow. Now, as long as the armpit stays closed. 
Okay. That is fine. But once you start to see air between so, the... This so is that much worse. is very bad. It puts a, much, a lot of stress to the shoulder joint. But this is just kind of bad. That is <laughs> actually not too bad okay. as long as that arm is tight down to your chest. The second thing, though, that I am seeing and that they should be able to see on, on the screen is that your head is tilted up. So right now, your head is not in alignment with the rest of your spine, which will place extra stress to the joints, yeah. muscles, tendons, ligaments, and nerves of the cervical spine and the upper back or the neck and upper back. And that is what I am trying to prevent. I want to... Um, uh, you know, treat their issues, reduce symptoms, but I want to prevent those same symptoms from coming back down the road. And this mm -hmm. could be an influence to that. So okay. what I will start by doing is taking different size pillows. I have, uh, these are contour memory foam pillows. I do not sell them, but they're great to use as a tool to see what the patient should be using, what okay. size pillow the patient should be using. So I'm gonna have you remove your pillow now let's put this pillow under your head. Now, you're going to bring <laughs> this arm, and you can, many patients will take another pillow yeah. and hug it with their upper body uh, to help that. But you're right, because now you're getting the appropriate stress, or you can place your arm right there. Okay. That's, that's also, you could also put it up here. <laughs> you could put it as long as the armpit stays closed. I didn't know I was going to get pillow training. You got it. <laughs> So now what you will see is that your head is more level mm -hmm. to the sleeping surface. And that's what we're looking for. I'm actually going to have you pick up your head. We're going to try one other pillow. This is a little bit lower. And again, you can do whatever you need to with that arm. Okay. I'm going to say that... It feels tippy. It feels it, wrong. It, exactly. And that is common with somebody who presents and is their head is tilted up with their current pillow. Mm -hmm. Right now it probably feels very flat to you or that your head is tilted down, yeah, tilt, but yeah. you are in good alignment here. Okay. okay. Now, so... Here's the other thing though. You, you've mentioned the shoulder a couple of times. Mm -hmm. I hope the microphone isn't getting beat up here. Um, my shoulder doesn't feel good now. <laughs> it, it's going to feel different yeah. than what you're accustomed to and I think your best the best bet for you would be to take another pillow mm -hmm. and to hug it with both of your arms to change okay. to change that All position. Right. But the problem here is that initially mm -hmm. any change is not going to feel right to right. you, but it is important to protect the health of your neck and upper back. The other thing that you notice with these contour memory foam pillows, just like I had mentioned before, the thickest portion of the pillow, if you can see that on the screen, the thickest portion of the pillow is under your neck, and then it dips down yep. in the center. So what you should feel again is bulk so, under the neck. So there's a there's a valley here. Yes. So there, it's bulky. It's more bulky here than it is in the center, but this is much more bulky on this side. With the contour pillows, you would never want to use the small side okay. because what then tends to happen is the head butts up against the large side and it can tilt the, the head and neck again. So now, so on your side, again, I'm going to have you look straight ahead. You sh that should be your position right there. Okay. okay. Now, I'm going to have you turn onto your back. We're going to try something. If you were a back sleeper, I'm going to have you pick up your head. I'm going to put this pillow under your neck. Now, Screwing up my hair. It, sorry about that. <laughs> Hold on, let me mess with the microphone. Okay. Now, what you will see here is that your chin is approximating your chest. Your nose is tilted down towards your chest. And what that is going to do is take out the good curvature, mm -hmm. cervical lordosis, in your neck, which we want to do anything that we can to maintain and preserve that curvature. So this pillow is too thick for you on your back. Oh. So I'm going to demonstrate. I'm going to grab a different pillow. Let's have you pick up your head. Now what the viewers will see is that your nose is now pointed 
to the ceiling. In fact, this pillow looks great for you. Your nose is pointed to the ceiling. You have the bulk of the pillow under your neck, supporting that good curve in your neck. And this will also help to open up your breathing passages as far as uh, sleeping and things mm -hmm. as well. So mm -hmm. interesting with you, I'm thankful that you are primarily a side sleeper. You are not flipping side and back and side and back. No. But if you were somebody that did that, it w no one pillow is going to fit you perfectly because you're actually two different sizes. You were a large, oh, really? you needed a thicker pillow on your side mm -hmm. and a thinner pillow on your back. So for you then, I would have you, if you can try to train yourself to either stay on your side or on your back. Mm -hmm. And the nice thing about sides, most, most patients will choose their sides because then they can flip flop side to side. So when people go to the store then to find a pillow, what, is, what do you, what should they do? It's, it is very difficult. I, I do sell a pillow in my office and at any time, if somebody wants to come in and schedule a time for me to do an assessment, I'd be happy to do that for them. It is difficult mm -hmm. because everyone, each body is a different size. Everyone's shoulder dimensions, the width of your shoulders, the length of your neck, it, it, is, it varies so much. It's mm -hmm. hard for a person to choose the right pillow on their own. Interesting. All right. So... All right, so while I'm back here, is there something else you wanted to point out in the last, what is it, couple minutes we've got here? Well, the other factor that plays into this also is the firmness of the bed. Oh, yeah. The typical rule of thumb is the firmer the bed, the thicker the pillow will be. Mm. If you have a softer bed and your body tends to sink in, mm -hmm. you will need a thinner pillow to accommodate your dimensions because of that. Okay. All right, so that's interesting too. So it's a little tricky, but I think it's worthwhile. People need to sleep in order to be healthy. So I'm gonna sit up here for a second as we're coming into our last few minutes here. So, um, all right, so people can bring their pillows to your office. Mm -hmm and you can help them figure out what pillow to use. Is, are these sizes standard? Uh, this is a specific company that sells these pillows mm -hmm. and um, the quality of the pillow is such that most memory foam, uh, contour memory foam pillows that you'll see out on the market, if you, if you do the squish test mm -hmm. and you uh, condense the material, you'll notice they go flat immediately. These pillows maintain their shape, but the issue is these pillows are quite expensive. Mm -hmm. And so the, um, I have an alternative in my office that I use that is much less expensive, um, and it's easy for the patient to get used to. That's good. That's good to know. All right, so do you have specific hours at your, your place, or is it just by appointment, or how do you work? I am open Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays from 8.30 to 6 o'clock are my treating hours. Um, and if anyone is interested in having their pillow assessed, I would ask that they call the office beforehand mm -hmm. so that I can actually schedule a time to have that done. Um, so people shouldn't come with their pillows no, in their please. car and <laughs> just no, drop in? <laughs> no, that doesn't work so well. So yes, I would need an appointment. Uh, they would need an appointment. Uh, my office uh, phone number is 608-318-5959. And uh, I would love to help. I, I find that those patients that work with their pillows and make these changes have longer lasting improvement in their neck upper and upper back conditions. I can imagine. I mean, you're pretty stationary for seven or eight hours. It, it's, it's a big a influence. It's a long time. I, I know it's real important. Um, I have a little foot issue, and when I am really good about wearing my neck gadget that makes, you know, tries to put my neck back into the right position, I can feel it in my foot. I mean, it just aligns everything. You need to have those curves right. The, the nerves 
from the brain that control the entire body obviously have to pass through the neck. So it is an area that is critical mm -hmm. to be uh, functioning as optimally as possible. Excellent. But that's not the only thing you do there. I want to make sure that everybody knows. Oh, for sure. <laughs> that's no. not all you do. You do the full scope of practice for chiropractic. Absolutely. And I work with many other uh, daily habits of my patients uh -oh. to try again <laughs> to prevent issues. The, sure. the goal of this is prevention. And uh, I, I want to treat and uh, eliminate issues, but then prevent their return. Excellent. So in our last couple seconds, we already gave the phone number, right? And the address was? 5 North Bird Street here in Sun Prairie on Excellent. the corner of Main and Bird. So I want to thank you for coming on today. I think this was really important and interesting information. We have um, a lot going on in Sun Prairie. And health-wise, I think, um, you know, if they don't have a chiropractor or maybe they just want want to have an evaluation of their pillow or something like that, I think is a good idea. Do you also see children? Absolutely. Uh, everyone with a spine. No way. <laughs> Anyone with a spine can have issues with their spine. So absolutely. Even, even infants. One of the most traumatic experiences of our life is the birthing process. And I will have patients bring in their newborns to assess their spines. Many times I don't find anything to work on. Mm -hmm. Their spines are okay. very pliable. But I believe that assessing and fixing those issues early uh, will help to set off a lifetime of problems. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> All right, so here we are at the end of the Spot for Health. My name is Shirley Gutkowski, and you are Dr. Jen. And uh, thank you for joining us on the Spot for Health. I'd like to remind you that you can share these episodes with your friends by going to ksun.tv. And in the little search box above the viewer, type in the Spot for Health and share, share, share. Have a great rest of the day.